Kia ora koutou katoa. My name is Ingrid Collins and I'm the Chair of Whangarā Farms Board. Whangarā Farms is a shining light in this area as far as Māori farming goes. We were approached by Beef and Lamb to look at innovative things to, that we could do to, to improve um, some of our systems policies and ultimately our bottom line on our, on our farms. We looked at plantain on hill country, so for us we have a lot of coastal hill country that has really low ME um, quality pasture, so we were looking at ways of actually increasing that ME and, and basically growing a better, better feed for, for our stock on the hills. We had Tom Fraser as our agronomist and, and facilitator for, for our program and we, look, we found him to be excellent and added a huge amount of value. Um, it wasn't just Tom, it was all the other experts and I guess that's one of the big things about being involved with beef and lamb that I found anyway um, for Whangarā Farms was the access to the experts. You know, I just encourage all farmers to, um, you know, to utilise the tools that are there and to get in and, and go to these field days and go to these beef and lamb workshops and, um, and, and learn what's actually out there and what potentially can increase your bottom line and, and provide more returns for you. Hi, I'm Rob Faulkner and uh, with my wife Sandra and um, sister and brother-in-law we farm here at, at uh, Mirawai, south of Gisborne. Uh, we farm uh, 600 hectares and uh, about 5,500 stock units. And this innovation uh, farm project is run over three different farms and us being one of them here um, south of Gisborne and the other ones in uh, south of Waipuk and the other ones just out of Marston. It's really working well because um, we all challenge each other and we're all quite competitive. Hopefully we can increase the legume content on our whole country and be able to produce um, fatter stock earlier and um, prevent that summer dry issue that we have. Yeah, I've been fortunate enough to have quite a big relationship with beef and lamb over a number of years and um, I've um, facilitated the Monitor Farm program right from sort of inception. Um, you get really genuine ownership from the, the whole district you know everyone wants to see this farm which has just started off as being missed average um, you know come through and do and better their lot and achieve their goals so it's it's been really really cool. I'm Debbie Hewitson and this is my sister Anne and we're part of Rokura Farming Partnership. We were really fortunate to be part of the Monitor Farm. We couldn't put our fingers on what exactly was hampering our performance and having the input from the Monitor Farm has been huge for our business. G'day, uh, Stuart Helm, uh, running Rokura for the Hewitsons, about 1,100 hectares with 900 effective, 50-50 uh, sheep cattle ratio at about nine stock units to the hectare. Yeah, uh, great coming into a farm that's willing to invest and um, j jumping in on the tail end of the beef and lamb monitor farm. I saw my role as really as um, uh, people manager and uh, developing a team and um, it's been most satisfying. Some of the things that, that were challenging at the start was basically uh, where the biggest gains could be made because there were so many things and to actually define exactly where the first priorities were because I wanted to do them all but we had put together a plan for the owners and, um, and work through that, get a few results so we could move forward. We were just focusing on doing basic stuff properly on time and there were huge gains to be made. Uh, we were quickly able to demonstrate this by um, minimising losses, increasing lambing percentage and making all the fences stock proof. Once we've nailed the low hanging fruit we started to move on to things like laneways, water systems, uh, intensive sheep and beef farming both with hoggett mating and heifer mating, developing a system amongst all that which was readily transferable between managers, remembering this is a managed farm with absentee owners. We have continued to follow the program, A, because it was so successful while we were, we were in it, so we couldn't change that. We are continuing to monitor. We use Cash Manager as our financial monitor, and we're far more open to investment because we're seeing the returns on our prior investment. We felt really encouraged by what local people were saying to us and they were very keen on us improving and so you know they would take us aside and say listen you need, really need to look at these ideas. 
We used to be, I suppose, some of the uh, poorer performing sheep farmers and cattle farmers in New Zealand. Now I'm proud to say that our guys are up there right amongst some of the very best in New Zealand. And there's no doubt that a lot of the initiatives, such as the Beef and Lamb Monitor Farm Program, have all played quite critical parts in getting you know, this whole district to lift its performance, to be motivated, to, you know, to, to be positive about what they can do. From a personal point of view, I guess you could just about say I'm a, I'm a product of Beef and Lamb sponsorship. So in 2011, I was, uh, it was a fantastic opportunity to join the Kellogg's Rural Leaders Program at Lincoln University, of which Beef and Lamb is a significant contributor. Uh, that was probably the beginning of my leadership journey within agriculture here in New Zealand. And I followed that up with a Nuffield Scholarship in 2012, and that was, well, it was out of this world to be honest. It was a fantastic privilege to be able to go out into the world look at what's happening across our agriculture globally and food product, both food production and fibre and bring it back here into New Zealand, assimilate it across what we do here on the farm, across our local community, regionally and, and nationally as well. So our daughter Ariana was fortunate enough to um, be awarded a Beef and Lamb Scholarship. Um, the first benefit, which is um, obvious, is that you know financially it is helping support her so she can actually 100% concentrate on her studies. Um, other things that uh, she's really enjoyed as being a scholar is attending the um, Farmers Council Conference and um, actually doing the brainstorming sessions and um, just meeting a lot of people that are actually in the industry now and seeing where her degree can take her and, and it actually opens up a, a very um, wide opportunities um, and experiences that they haven't been exposed to. Yeah. One of the other projects that we have, we were involved with with Beef and Lamb was uh, in conjunction with McDonald's um, around the beef sustainability modelling um, and we found that hugely valuable. Basically at the end of that program, that three year sort of project looking into beef sustainability and how we could sustainably farm our, our cattle on our hill country. Um, what, what came out of that was a, was sort of probably a gold standard level three LEP um, that, that is just extremely important to us now moving forward within our business. One of the biggest challenges facing us going forward is um, proving to everyone that we are good with your environment, that we don't really have to change a lot of what we're doing. We're already doing it anyway, and um, we need to get it across to the public that we are um, farming sustainably for the future, so our kids can have a great future in farming, and, and our grandkids and everyone else's families. Um. I think our East Coast farming region has a couple of challenges going forward in terms of climate. Um, Obviously we're looking at drier summers and it seems as of late the possibility of um, intense wetter winters maybe too. One of the big challenges that I've, I believe is facing our industry um, you know, is around capability and, um, and, and I guess the lack of capability coming through. And we all need to get out there and we need to actually promote what we do and our, and our industry um, to get more young people interested and into farming. Farming's just so diverse, and I don't think enough people realise, you know, the whole different career paths you can you can take within agriculture. One of the challenges that I think we face as an industry, uh, we talk a lot about getting young people involved in our industry. We talk a lot about uh, gender diversity, getting women involved in their in their farming businesses. But I think one of the things that we are missing going forward is the emotional wellness of our farming community. And I, and I wonder if it's a conversation that we need to be having more around how we support one another in this space because the days of popping down to the school or popping down to the pub or meeting at the dog trials, unfortunately in a lot of cases have gone. So where do people go to have those conversations that diffuse a situation or maybe give the locals a, a heads up that somebody's not coping so well? It'd be fantastic if as an industry we could say, you know what? We've got your back. <laughs>